Okay, now it's time for the last chapter of No Flying in the House, chapter 11. Going up the back stairs from the kitchen, Annabelle almost collided with Miss Peach. At the same moment, the doorbell rang. No one's expected, said Miss Peach, hurrying to answer the urgent ringing. Let's hope Mrs. Van Court hasn't invited guests and forgotten to tell me. Curious, Annabelle followed her to the front hall. The moment Miss Peach touched the knob, the door sprang open as though by magic, almost upsetting her. Admitting with the ocean breeze, the strangest couple Annabelle had ever seen entered. The man was young and tall, with hair the color of honeysuckle, and eyes that twinkled like blue water in the sun. The woman, whom Annabelle took it to be his wife, was beautifully dressed in blue clothes that floated around her like soft feathers. Her pretty blonde head came up only as high as his waist, for she was not much taller than Annabelle. May I ask who's calling? said Miss Peach. So rattled by the strange couple's entrance, she forgot to close the door. <clears throat> the man and his wife exchanged looks full of laughter. They seemed to share a hilarious secret. Before the man could answer, his little wife, seeing Annabelle, started to drift towards her like a beautiful blue butterfly. The moment Annabelle felt the woman's touch, she guessed who she was. The silky cheek against hers the warm embrace, the comforting hand against her hair could only belong to her mother. The name, said the man, is Tippins, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas Tippins. Realizing all of a sudden what was happening, Miss Peach gasped, Annabelle, they've come back. The spell was broken. Annabelle hugged her mother. Then her father gave her a big kiss, swinging her up in the exact way Mr. Cox swung Beatrice. Annabelle laughed. She could tell her father was very strong. My very own, she kept saying over and over through happy tears. My very own parents. <clears throat> Miss Peach, who said it was just like in the movies, began to cry too. And Mr. and Mrs. Tippins joined in. The four of them stood there crying until Miss Peach managed to tell Annabelle to take them into the drawing room while she called Mrs. Van Court and fixed tea. Seating her parents on the drawing room sofa, Annabelle climbed into her father's lap. He sent her his handkerchief to blow her nose. It was difficult to believe her mother was a real fairy princess. Reaching over, she gave her mother's small hand a soft squeeze. Gloria said you would return. If only she could have told me about the spell, I would have broken it long ago. Nothing else could have kept us from you, said her father. We wanted to be with you more than anything. Mrs. Tippins lifted Annabelle's hand to her cheek setting in motion the soft tendrils of her blue gown. Gloria is our dearest friend. We have her to thank for bringing us all together again. I thought she loved me too much to go away, said Annabelle. She loved you most of all, said her mother. Mr. Tippins nodded. It was because she loved you so much that she went away. Leaving you was the only way she knew to help you. Felicia. Felicia explained it to her. Mrs. Tippins touched her eyes with a handkerchief as soft as a silver cobweb. When our enemy, the wicked fairy Belinda, told you that you were a fairy and taught you to fly, she believed you would choose to be a fairy forever and ever, destroying completely our chances to escape from the island of exile. Annabelle began to understand. Was that why Gloria was so sad? But why did she leave me? I missed her so much I got sick. When she didn't come back, I wished for you to return. I wanted parents like other little girls. 
I wanted someone to love me. Her mother nodded. That is exactly what Gloria planned. Though it was terribly hard to leave you, she hoped that with no one to love you and give you a mother's care, you might change your mind about wanting to be a fairy forever and ever. Of course, she was forbidden to tell you about the spell. She could only hope you would break it in time. Fortunately, you were able to force the information from Belinda. And Gloria, asked Annabelle, climbing into her mother's arms. That gold dog isn't really Gloria, is it? Has she gone away forever? Her mother smoothed Annabelle's hair. Gloria had to return to the kingdom of the fairies. If all goes well, she will be free to visit us soon, before she begins her stage career. Hooray, shouted Annabelle, clapping her hands. At that moment, Mrs. Van Court entered the room, followed by Miss Peach with the tea tray. Annabelle made the introductions. Tippins, said Mrs. Van Court, putting on her glasses to peer at Annabelle's parents. When Annabelle learned to fly, Gloria told me who Annabelle's mother was, but she didn't identify her father. Thomas, why are you using that name? You know very well what your name is. Of course, said Mr. Tippins. I changed it in anger years ago. Will you change it right back, said Mrs. Van Court. And that suit, a good tweed when it was new, it doesn't fit anymore. Can't your wife have a wave a wand or something and make it the right size? Mr. Tippins smiled warmly, taking her hand. Are you glad to see me? Annabelle stared at her father and Mrs. Van Court. Listening to their conversation, she realized they had met before. Amazed, she watched Mrs. Van Court, like a queen bestowing favors, kiss her father's forehead. Then leaning down, Mrs. Van Court pressed a thin cheek against her mother's soft one. Annabel had never seen her greet anyone so familiarly before. Smiling kindly, Mrs. Van Court spoke in a strained voice. <clears throat> Welcome to the family, my dear. Thomas has no doubt told you that I am his mother. Annabelle wondered if she were dreaming. His mother? His mother, shrieked Miss Peach, who had not recognized him. Tommy, you've come home. Astonished, Annabelle watched Miss Peach throw her arms around Mr. Tippins and dance him around the drawing room. Turning to Mrs. Van Court, she asked, Does that mean you are my grandmother? Mrs. Van Court nodded. Provided you don't go flying about, the Van Courts don't fly. Annabelle wondered how Mrs. Van Court could remain so calm through the excitement until she saw her grab the back of a chair to steady herself and dab the corner of her eye. When she thought no one was looking, poor Mrs. Van Court, she was just as happy as Miss Peach to have her son return, but unlike Miss Peach, she didn't know how to show it. As soon as Mrs. Van Court sat down, Annabelle climbed up on her lap and gave her a big kiss. I'm so glad you are my grandmother, she said. If you don't mind, I'm going to give you a kiss every single day forever and ever. And before Mrs. Van Court could express disapproval, Annabelle climbed down and ran to her mother. I just can't wait another moment, she told her. Now that you're back and I know we're going to see Gloria again, I've just got to phone Beatrice Cox. And that is the end of No Flying in the House, my favorite book from childhood. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do.